let's go ahead and jump right into it here. Game number one. This is Shadows versus Orjax. Alrighty, guys. All right. Without further ado, let's get into it here in the top right-hand corner of the map, playing as the orange Zerg pieces. Give it up. It is Orjax. Man, laggy. And in the bottom left, in the blue, playing as the Protoss pieces. Give it up. It is Shadows. All right. Let's get out of there. There we go. One second here, guys. I apologize. I'm going to make sure we have full control of this. It might freeze for just a second. Just switching my, uh... Okay. Should be good now. There we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like it. There we go. Cool. Alrighty, so... So we do get into this right here. Got the, the uh, fancy smancy gateways coming down here for shadows. On the other side, it is going to be Ling opening from Orjax. Actually, a one, uh, one base Ling kind of rush coming through for Orjax. Going to send out six links. He finally, will expand after this. It's not going to be a committed all in at this point, but we'll at least have a little bit of pressure put in cross shadows. Though it does have this proxy pylon across the map, so. If he does want to, say, warp in some units up there, he's going to be able to reinforce at least. Or maybe he wants to proxy altogether. Wouldn't surprise me in the least. But we do have the links coming across now for Orjax. Looking to get in and get some pressure. The Zealot is already theirs, though, so we shouldn't see too much come from that. But let's see. And look like he's going to be able to get in. We'll be able to start working on the gateways, though, so we will see uh, if he can actually get that down behind this. Speed just finishing up for Orjax, getting that upgrade as well. Toilet Council is going to be on the way for Shadows, so could potentially go into, say, some uh, Archons. P could go into DTs. The uh, thing is limitless here. So we'll see how that ends up playing out. Uh, Links will go ahead and back up at this point with the Adepts coming out with that Zealot out as well. Not going to be able to get too much more done and shield battery finishing up. Just going to put a stop to everything. He could potentially get the gateway though. If he tried hard enough, he could get the gateway. DT Shrine is going to be what is on the plate here for Shadow. So we'll see. Can he get any damage done with this? Uh, if we look on across the map here on Orjax side, he does not have a whole lot of, um, like anti-air, or not anti-air, excuse me, uh, detection. See how he ends up playing out with that. Speed on the way as well for shadows. Ooh. Ooh. DTs with a follow-up of some charge lots could be very nice, especially with kind of what Orjax has been going. He's going heavily into drones. He's not really getting any units or anything like that. He has the larva available that if he needs to spam up a bunch of links or something, he should be able to, but with nine drones coming in, he just used all of his larva. Um. Okay. Ooh. Oh, he actually scouts it out. That's just a big pickup here for Orjax. Gonna see the DT Shrine. We should see him throw down some anti or some spore crawlers or something here. Uh, if not, he might be in a little bit of trouble. Third base coming down for Orjax as well behind this. So there it is. All right. Layer tech on the way now as well. And again, what does Orjax really have? He has three queens and five drones, or excuse me, five lings. Doing pretty good with the worker count, but just not a whole lot as far as the army count goes. I guess potentially just waiting for whenever that that aggression does come here. So 
A couple of depths will push away any kind of ling, any kind of detection that may cause trouble for shadows. And we should be seeing some DTs being warped in pretty soon here. If not, maybe it's just a distraction saying, ha ha ha, got you now. But we'll see for sure. All right, and Def's gonna come across the map now here to the third base, looking to potentially put some aggression towards this base. Ling, so gonna get a nice surround, no shading to be had, and we'll take those out pretty quickly there. All around looking pretty good, man. Uh, I like it. Shadow's playing very conservative though. Um, he's behind in army count a little bit, and worker count just by like one or two, nothing too major. Does have detection as well for the scout or anything like that, but so far just keeping it at his base, really allowing Orjax to just drone up at this point. Uh, I feel like you know Orjax is going to get up to about 50 workers and then start putting on some pressure, but will it really even matter? Additional pylon is going to come down for Shadows, and yeah, I mean Shadows is playing very, very kind of defensive for what it is. Uh, he is going to finally send a couple of DTs in. I don't think that at this point now they'll get too much done. And maybe he'll be able to get a couple of kills, kind of force the, the units in a weird place, but uh, until he gets over here, he, he can't really see him. Gonna try to pick up a couple of loose drones here. Maybe even take care of a lot of these lings as well. This could be huge though. He's actually right out of range, I think. Oh no, he's in range. Okay, cool. Alrighty, so right out of range now here is Shadows looking to uh, continue to put on that onslaught. Third base behind this as well, and not Shadows doing what he is. He's stepping into the shadows with these DTs, but Again, I just don't think a lot of damage is going to be done with that. I like that he's going into the Immortals. Uh, potentially, we'll start getting some um, Zealots and stuff like that. I would like to see him add on additional Gateways. But we'll see if he can actually do that. He's going to go ahead and throw down some more DTs. And uh, oh, I think at this point, I just don't see him... Well, he's still got those two up. I guess the more the merrier kind of thing. Pylon does go down, so no additional kind of warp ins across the map will be able to happen. He still has the DTs, though, and those can do a lot of damage, especially against the Queens and against this low army resource of uh, Orjax, but. No. Like that. It looks like Orjax is going to be in a little bit of trouble here. Some more Lings do end up popping out, but these DTs just do so much damage. I think that might be enough here now that should be able to at least take out a couple, and it does. Good move here, though, from Orjax, being able to kill off multiple of those. Still getting damage done. Six drones do fall down. Queen's falling at the natural as well. Yeah, I mean, eventually we'll get cleaned up, but a very good part there on Shadow's End. They even able to get that third base up and potentially running here in just a few moments. I just think Shadow's at this point, though, needs to do more than just DTs. Um, he could continue to run them in, sure, and get a little bit of damage done here and there, but with the addition of this extra hatch and more of these links coming through, this could present a huge problem. Or shadows. The overseer is there now as well, which is going to help out with these links. Still nine drones falling at the wayside. Sixteen altogether. Seventy-one links and seven queens have fallen. Orjax though still in the lead here for for the most part in army supply and all of that. But I guess if he continues to put on this pressure, he will feel feel the wrath. Um. Lings are going to go ahead and go across the map now here for Orjax. Shadows is prepared, but again, there's so much that only like four DTs can do against this mass amount of Lings, and he's just going to keep them at the natural. The Zealot and the Adept will fall. Potentially this third base as well. Looks like um, 
Yeah, I mean, he's going to go ahead and send everything across to try to stop this. He's got a nice sentry count as well as a couple of the mortals, but he still will lose that third base, and that is just not what you want to do as a Protoss. So you want to keep that economy up and running. Both players are actually kind of floating a lot of minerals at this point, so I don't think it really matters that much. But actually, some nice force fields there. Going to be able to take off a lot more of these uh, uh, lings, but... We'll see how this ends up going. He does still have the Observer with this army, and I guess, in a sense, that's okay. But if you want to detect, see what your opponent's doing, you definitely want to have that across the map. Those look like sh shadows, however. Is this going to continue to stay at home, playing very defensively, trying to get that economy up while we see multiple bases being taken from uh, Orjax here. Even has a nice amount of lings, a bunch of bailings being morphed in as well. And this could present a huge problem here for Shadows if he is not prepared. <clears throat> um, just lings and lings and lings coming out here from our, our Zerg player. He does finally go up to Hive Tech and we'll be able to start making some more units. He's got the uh, infested, infestation pit, that neural parasite being researched, actually almost done. Uh, plus two is being done as we speak as well to the zero zero here of Shadows. Shadows definitely in trouble. The third base trying to get back up will be taken down here as the Bailings do roll in. See, packing those up. Really smart play here. Trying to pull Shadows out of position. Doesn't look like that's going to be the case. Jack's playing this very, very cautiously. Five bases now here for Orjax, two e two bases of Shadows. Shadows definitely in a lot of trouble. Gonna have a little bit of an army come across now with the Zealots, but there's just so many lings that these Zealots is gonna get torn to shreds here. That is not looking good. Looks like Shadows ready to move across the map. Feels like he needs to get some pressure done. Needs to get some damage done. He does have the War Prism to help warp in some more units. He is able to warp in a bunch of Zealots, and those will be able to be a mean shield here for our Protoss player. Archon's going to morphed in, and this is actually looking like a pretty good army from Shadows. If he can control it well and not take too much damage from the Bailings, should be okay, but does he have enough? That is the question. More DTs are going to be made as well, and... And Shadow's just going to go all in at this point. They come. The Link's going to come in here with those Bailings. The Bailings just going to roll in on top of everything. Just demolishing everything. And what Protoss army are you talking about? It's completely eliminated. Prism. The only thing that stands, the good thing for Shadows is that there's no anti-air, so he can literally just keep that there as long as he wants. I'm actually going to warp in 1DT, but with the Overseers there, shouldn't be able to get too much on. I actually sees the Infestors now as well. God, that'd be cool if you can like warp in some Zerg units with the Warp Prism. This is just looking really bad right now here for Shadows. He is trying to come back to this. Trying to get that third base up and running, but this army from Orjax is so deadly right now. Shadows needs to try to move away from this, especially since we have Ultras on the way, a Greater Spire on the way as well. Lings will go ahead and return to this third base to try to shut it down once again. The Infestors in the back to deal Fungals or Infested Terrans if needed. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I think at this point he could just A move and uh, be in a pretty good position. Wings are going to go ahead and go down here. We do see those Infestors still holding it onto the back. Bailing speed has been completed, and just see the roly polies of the Bailings coming in. The Ultras will finally join this army. And that, you know what? He just needs one. They just need one big brother. That is going to be the case. Jack's playing this very, very cautiously. Shadows will eventually kind of see where this army is and knows that the intimate threat is upon him. 
As he try to take this third base yet again, just continuously getting shut down from Orjax. No, he's got three more ultras on the way as well. Eh. I don't know. <clears throat> I mean, he's already on plus three. He's got plus three melee almost done as well. I just think at this point he should be more than okay. Have it the bailing nest. I'm gonna come in. I'm gonna start eliminating a lot of this army. Those ultras trying to jump jump and chomp chomp on all of this. Bailing's gonna roll in, just eliminate all of those archons, and uh, yeah. I I think this is gonna be game at this point. Sentry trying to or the batter battery shield trying to get everything but not going to be able to and uh, GG will be called we will see Orjax taking game number one here let's go ahead and go right into it here game number two see what will end up happening Alrighty guys, without further ado, here in the top left hand corner of the map, playing as the Zerg pieces, give it up, it is Orjax! In the bottom right, in the blue, playing as the Protoss pieces, give it up, it is Shadows. So, um, yeah, it's already feeling a little bit better. Um, there's a program I have called Overwolf, which uh, some people might know what that is. Some people might know um, it has a Starcraft builder on it, so you can use it to practice builds with. It gives you timings and and as you're playing the game, it'll actually like count down like at this time you need to throw this down. So it's really good if you're a newer player, you're looking to learn some builds and want to get some timings down to get better. Um, definitely check that out as well as I have other things that I've been recently getting into like League of Legends, and I was trying to look at something on there. They have like a build thing for that as well. Just was trying it out, and I guess for some reason it didn't exit it out. So, um, but looks like things should be good now. Uh, as we get into game number two, though, here it looks like on Ephemeron, uh, Orjax again with this kind of uh, at Ling first style play. Um, we've actually seen a lot of Zergs do this more often. It provides a lot of um, just kind of poking and being aggressive. At the same time, you, you get your bases up. You don't have to worry about you know Protoss just all inning you at that point. You can get across. Get some damage done or at least keep the Protoss at home and see what he's doing. Looks like he will be able to actually get the, uh, the gateway here. That's a nice pickup. One Adept will eventually pop out here. At this point, you know, Shadows has this on lockdown, so I don't see Orjax actually getting in, but delaying more of Shadows stuff is, uh, is very nice. Gonna allow him to only make one unit at a time, essentially. A, a crazy thing. The only thing I would like to see more from Orjax is that um, he needs to, I guess, be in a sense, be a little bit more aggressive. He's very passive aggressive. He he loves to attack. He loves to get the damage done. And then he pulls away. Uh, it is very good to do that, but I think sometimes he's a little too cautious and he just wants to continue to keep playing, even though he could probably end it at a certain points. Uh, third base is coming down here for or Jax though, so it should be pretty good and. Uh, right now, Shadows is basically blocked into his base. He can't really get anything else done. And here we have Orjax with that uh, sweet action Overlord coming in here. We're going to see the Stargates, the extra gateways coming through. And uh, we should see... Okay, Phoenix first. I like it. Phoenix first followed up by the Oracles. going to be very nice. Already, though, we see the Spore Crawlers coming out here from Orjax. And he is going to, you know, have some kind of defense. Now, if Shadows goes for a couple of Oracles opening, he could definitely get some damage done. Uh, I don't know how good his micro will be. Uh, if he can get in there, get the damage done, and pop out. 
Uh, we will definitely see how good it is or if he will just lose them automatically to those queens and spore crawlers. Alrighty. So, uh, what we have here? Another proxy pylon coming in. Some additional warpins of zealots. This is one thing I do like about Shadows is he has this potential to, you know, continue to put on a little bit of aggression. Unfortunately, the style of Orjax counteracts this, where you know Orjax gets a lot of links, he gets a lot of potential, and just shuts down anything that Shadows tries to do. Um, yeah. I would like to see a little bit more coming from him, but you know what? Doing a good job so far. Shadows is going to go ahead with the Oracle to go across and put on that pressure. War Prism has popped out as well. Could present itself another opportunity here. Can he get the warp ins in? Oh! He will at least get a couple in, but by the time they even warp in, he's going to be dead. Unfortunate there, and Orjak's going to be able to at least sub. I don't know, he won't even supply block him. Um. Shadows just has so much supply open. Which is good. He's not going to supply and block himself anytime soon. War Prism going to go across the map on the other side while the Oracle does actually go to this natural base. Must be careful though, the Queen is sitting right there. But I think he could pop in, maybe get a kill, and then have to pop right back out. So we will see how that ends up happening. War Prism is going to go ahead... Looks like to the main base, essentially warping some zealots and do a little bit of a run by in the main. Let's see, activating the Oracle. Nope, not gonna be able to. Ah! Unfortunate. Doesn't get anything done there, but he does get the opportunity to actually warp in here. Barely gonna be seen here from Orjax if he's paying attention. Doesn't look like he is. And. Okay, now he's he's realized what is going on. The Ling's automatically coming over here. The Zealot's not really doing anything at the moment. They're just sitting there. I could have been getting in. Um, looks like he's waiting for another warp in here. He needs some more uh, gateways. He's adding on three, which is good, but... This is unfortunate. Orjax shutting him down every step of the way at this point. Behind this, we do have more links. We have plus two on the way. Shadows doesn't have a forge or anything. He has not been able to get any upgrades. He's this constant uh, unit production at this point. Getting even a couple of um, probes, but still only at a 20 or 30 workers to the 54 here of Orjax. Gotta be super careful. third base has been done for a while here for Jax. He's already got that fully saturated and uh, you can really kind of tell the difference in the skill levels. I mean from Platinum 3 to Gold 2. Just a little bit more uniformity here from War Jax. Um, I don't know. I, I think a little bit of anti-air would be or air would be good here for the Protoss but can't really even transition into that. He's just making straight up probes all together. Doesn't have a whole lot of army. What does the Proton have? He has seven, eight zealots. Three of them are across the map. War Prism and a couple of depths and a couple of mortals. So, again, the heavy bailings coming out from Ordrax. Those are going to provide very crucial um, attacks for Ordrax as he goes into the natural or tries to shut it down, anyways. Actually, pretty good here. The zealots should be able to take care of the queen. Forcing back Orjax a little bit here. The plus two upgrade just steals so much. Oh, he actually has enough Zealots this time. Transfuses are pretty good here on the Queens and the Zealots. They're going to start pushing here towards the natural. Trying to chase these Queens all the way home. I like think the Queens wee 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 all the way home. We'll be able to at least kill off one of them before they are all taken out, but more Zealots are coming in. There are a lot of uh, Lings here, though. These Zealots will eventually fall, but you know what? A pretty good job coming out here from Shadows this time, forcing Sh Orjax home. Good stuff.
Alrighty. The Bailings looking like deadly peas as they roll across the map. Uh, I am interested to see, you know, does Orjax again wait till he's almost maxed out before he attacks? Does he try to just go in? So if we look here on the army side of Shadows, what does he have? He's got a couple of sentries, he's got the Zealot. He's still blocked into his base, so he can't even leave to expand at this point. Um, you know, he's got a couple of Zealots and Immortals in his main, finally getting Forges. But he's not even getting upgrades at this point. Um, he's doing a good job of, you know, with his cycles, but... Again, he, he needs to, to do something here. War Prism going to come back down here onto this third base. Going to warp in some more Zealots and start trying to attack onto this third. Does he actually force the reaction here from Orjax? No, nope. looks like Orjax going to go ahead for the, the bust here. That could be exactly what he needs. The Bailings rolling through. Just going to demolish everything. All of the sentries fall. Here we have it. The Ling's going to get into the... Uh, Natural taking out all of the probes. GG. And we will see Orjax going on to game uh, next round. <laughs> so, GG's. <clears throat> well played. Uh, good series, man. Orjax showing some promise there. Gonna be interesting as he gets on to the rest of the uh, the series.